Hassan Hassan for Agberg. One uh, 363 South Powell. Yep. Uh, his car is parked in the alley right now. He is a gang member. He's known to be around firearms. Him and I believe his brother Hussein did a uh, Agberg on a house in South Park. Hussein had a gun, pistol whipped the guy. Um, Hassan knows he has the warrant. In my mind, you're going after the absolute worst this world has to offer. Murderers, the rapists, the pedophiles. Arriving at 363 South Powell Avenue on the right. The people that everyone wants to see in custody, that's who we go after. And if they can't be found, ultimately, it gets brought to the marshal service to try to find that person. U.S. Marshals with the warrant, open the door! Where's the sign at? Send him out. Where's the sign? When alleged gang member Hassan Hassan was taken into custody in Columbus, Ohio on August 16, 2018, his arrest showed how the resources of several law enforcement agencies can be brought together to apprehend a fugitive. But Hassan's case is not typically what happens to individuals with an outstanding warrant. There are just too many of them. The United States is drowning in millions of warrants, and the endless flow makes it impossible to apprehend most of those who have been charged with breaking the law. The result is an endless backlog of cases that are quickly forgotten. With the number of charges being filed, the number of warrants being issued, law enforcement can't possibly spend their entire working days just attempting to serve warrants. They would end up doing little else. Judge Green's point comes to life at 11 p.m. on a Sunday night when a Columbus police officer appears at the Franklin County Clerk of Court's office to create a warrant after a domestic violence call. Uh, the suspect's name is going to be first name Jonathan. That'll be John Ocean Nora Ocean Victor Adam Nora. According to police, the suspect repeatedly slapped and hit the woman he lived with and then tried to strangle her. 62180, black hair, brown eyes. With the warrant in front of him, an officer at the desk tries to find other officers available to assist in the arrest of Jonathan Meek. Yeah, I mean, that was, the, that was his last known location. And, uh, you know, he starts by calling the police radio room, then switches to calling individual on-duty officers. Yeah, I tried to hit up some of the young guys, but uh, they're busy on a 27 right now, so it might be code four for tonight. It becomes clear after a few minutes that no officers are available to serve the warrant and arrest Meek. Uh, we'll give it a few more minutes, see if anybody gives me a call back, but if they don't, then i got to head out and drink some coffee because I have special duty tonight. The warrant paperwork is then put into the clerk of court's extensive filing system. Clerk Lori M. Tyack's office, how can we help you today? Because it looks like it was a warrant with a payout. Yeah, I'm not showing an active warrant. Since it was not paid on the 15th, we issued out a warrant. Warrants have become an industry that involves officers, judges, and a plethora of administrators. Yeah, like you would probably have a warrant. Appearance, that's why we put a warrant out. But if you pay it off in full, then that gets rid of the warrant. We can Such as those at the Franklin County Clerk of Court's office. Here, a staff of half a dozen or so employees are kept busy answering calls from the public regarding their so warrants. So you now have a $554 warrant. Uh, it's a cashier to your parents. I would never say there were too many warrants. A warrant gets issued when it is determined that a warrant needs to be issued. There needs to be a means by which people are brought to justice. And the last couple of days, I've been in my courtroom uh, processing anywhere from 60 to 80 cases each of those days. Of that, let's just say 70 case docket, I will probably issue 10 to 15 bench warrants based on people failing to appear. Now in my court, 15 judges multiply that average number of warrants by 15. Then you have 17 judges in the Court of Common Pleas General Division. You have another five, soon to be six judges over in the Court of Common Pleas Domestic Relations and Juvenile Branch, where they're issuing warrants for adults and youth alike. 
Uh, there's a lot of warrants being issued on a daily basis just out of the trial courts in Franklin County. As many as six million people are wanted on warrants across the United States, including thousands of cases where suspects are accused of serious crimes like murder, assault, or robbery. During a summer downpour, Columbus police SWAT officers worked with Delaware County Sheriff's deputies to apprehend suspects in a series of thefts of power tools. So there is a uh, uh, investigation involving the theft of retail merchandise from big box retailer, um, specifically. Uh, been, uh, four more adults, three children inside. Five oh one, I copy that. Um, Big box retailer, uh, Home Depot, Lowe's type stores, uh, power tools, um, thefts amounts upwards of $50,000. So Delaware County is doing the investigation and they have arrest warrants up and search warrant on this location. But the vast majority of warrants are not for serious offenses, a fact that frustrates law enforcement officials. Until we reform the system and decide what's important to us, I think that we're, we're just never going to give it a, a, a strong effort to go out and get every one of those warrants that were filed last week um, served. Because I don't believe that that's what our community is interested in. There's an, an awareness issue. They're not aware. You're going to tell them in this article that there's a thousand warrants that got issued last week and they're like, oh my gosh. But then when it drills down to, oh well, I might have been one of those because I didn't pay my ticket mm -hmm. on time. They're like, no wait, I don't want you arresting me. I want you arresting the felons that are violent offenders and all that kind of stuff. But I also think that reform is necessary. I think that we as a society need to decide how we want to deal with lawbreakers. And um, they have big concerns about how the police deal with lawbreakers. But I think they need to be more interested as well in what the rest of the criminal justice system does with lawbreakers. And this brings us back to Hassan Hassan, whose arrest began this report. It's a never ending job, thankless job, um, you know, but somebody's got to do it. Hassan was apprehended by a task force of agents from the United States Marshal Service, Columbus Police, the Franklin and Delaware County Sheriff's Departments, the Ohio Adult Parole Authority, and even an agent from the Social Security Administration. Two days after Hassan's arrest, he appeared in Judge Green's arraignment court. ZRA 016222, State of Ohio versus Hassan, Hassan, one count F1 aggravated burglary. There are additional facts in this matter. Sure the judge followed the standard formula for setting bond, which in this case, despite the effort and expense made to apprehend Hassan, was only $25,000. Preliminary hearing date will be August the 24th, 2018 at 9.04 a.m. Hassan arranged to have a bail bondsman provide the money, and he was freed from jail. He did not show up for his next court appearance. A warrant has been issued for his arrest.